a Bitcoin transaction. You get one Bitcoin from someone. Okay, here is your Bitcoin. Um, you want to send it, then you put that Bitcoin into a transaction. This is how we show a transaction. This is, this is how we draw a transaction. So you have a one Bitcoin input into the transaction, and then you want to send 0 0.6 Bitcoin to me. Awesome. So one Bitcoin in, 0 0.6 to me. Wait, what happens with the 0 0.4 Bitcoin? That's the minor fee. <laughs> but you have to have another output in the transaction. And that's the change that goes back to you. So this is how Bitcoin works. This is the UTXO set model. Ethereum works in a different way because they are using balance model, which is privacy is very, very hard to build on a, on a model where you have a balance and not, not, not UTXOs like this. So, okay, what can we do with these UTXOs? Oh, but before that, a Bitcoin transaction, you have to sign it, so it has to have a signature. And this comes back, now I'm going to explain segregated witness, is that you are segregating the witness, you are segregating the signature, so you are putting the signature outside of the transaction. <laughs> That's how simple it is. But in terms of fees, which is going to be relevant for us a bit later, it's a, we still pay some fees after the signatures. The signatures are huge uh, compared to the transaction. Um, so, one interesting thing is that this is why it's a block size increase because the signature doesn't disappear, but you are paying less fees for it. But you're still paying fees for the signatures, just not the whole thing. This is some economic planning there, right, in the protocol level. This is a Bitcoin transaction. Now, let's talk about coin joins. So we have the exact same Bitcoin transaction up there. And then we have a new Bitcoin transaction for 2.1 Bitcoin in and 0 0.7 to someone and 0 1.4 to someone else. Well, what is a coin join? You just combine these two transactions and that's a coin join. It's, it's not magic. It's, but we have a problem with this kind of coin join. What, what is the problem with that? Just Please, someone shout it because I'm not sure you're following me. What is the problem with this coin join? Is that you can de-anonymize it easily because you can see that where the thing's coming from, even if it's in one transaction, it's not a very private coin join. Okay, so what can we do? We can do a lot of things with it, but one thing that we could do is that I removed the 1.4 Bitcoin and I create three more outputs back to the same guy. So now the 0 0.6 Bitcoin, we don't really know which input it comes from. And the 0 0.4 Bitcoin outputs, we don't really know which input it comes from. So no, this is a better way to do coin joins. Okay, this is a better way to do coin chains, but it's, it puts more data on the blockchain because there are more UTXOs. Well, that's, that's not optimal. So what can we do? Confidential transactions. Back to the exact same coin join that was unoptimal, what would confidential transactions do? Confidential transactions is not in Bitcoin, and it's a good question if it will be in Bitcoin. Uh, what would it do? It would just hide the amount. That's, that's what confidential transaction is all about. This is the simplest thing in a conceptual level, as you can imagine. So now you, you, you have no idea what's going on in this, in this, in this transaction. Okay, so th there is a 
big problem with that, a big problem, because confidential transaction proofs outputs are huge. So you would have to pay a very large fees because you are paying the fees after blockchain space used. Okay, so bullet proofs. Uh, have you heard about bullet proofs? Who, who heard about bullet proofs? Okay, a lot of people. Okay, so what does bullet proofs do uh, compared to confidential transactions? For one, it makes the proof smaller. For two, it aggregates them. Um, and this is very, very powerful because if there are 100 people doing coin join together, then you just have one proof and it's not going to matter. The fee is not going to matter anymore. So private transactions become close as expensive as non-private transactions, which is great. But it even gets better with signature aggregation. In signature aggregation, you see, we have two signatures in the inputs. In the inputs. And we can aggregate them and make the, our transaction even smaller. And now, we have, the, the, this is not in Bitcoin protocol yet, but this is, this has, this is coming. So it's not like confidential transactions, like, uh, Probably coming, maybe coming, I don't know. Okay, but this is coming. So now, if you have 100 inputs and only one signature, that's great because now it's, you are basically not paying for the signature because you are sharing one signature fee for, with, with everyone in the transaction. So now, fully private, coin join transactions, with confidential transactions and bulletproofs, and Schnorr signatures are even cheaper than normal Bitcoin transactions. So this is where we want to get with Bitcoin privacy. Thank you.